Before we look at translation of foreign operations, I want you to write down these three rules. The first rule, remember, all assets and liabilities at year end should be recognized at closing spot rate. Second rule, on transaction date, guys, this means any transaction date, our transaction should be recognized at spot rate. And the third important one is that our income and expenses should be recognized at an average spot rate at year end. Now guys, this is the three important rules that you need to know for our following test. Let's have a look at translation of foreign operations. You have to study this table. Guys, I've received quite a lot of questions last year and I could immediately identify that a student do not know the rules. Therefore, when you work through any foreign operation question, you need to either have your table next to you or you had to study this already. Okay. Now, what's a foreign operation? This is where we have a parent that owns shares in a foreign entity. Remember, and this foreign entity we will call a foreign operation. The foreign entity has to prepare financial statements, AFS, annual financial statements, in terms of the foreign currency, the presentation currency. Now, RS21 indicates to us rules on how to account for this foreign operation into our group. When we discuss the different types of foreign activities, you will remember that we have indicated one when we have a foreign operation. Remember, then we need to compile group financials if this falls within a subsidiary, associate, JV, joint arrangement. Or remember, a foreign operation can also be a branch. Number two, we've indicated that that foreign operation has to prepare annual financial statements in terms of the presentation currency. And number three, where we have a foreign transaction, and this is our example one, the basic example that we looked at. Now, this page explains to us how to recognize a foreign operation into our group. And this is the rules, and as I have mentioned, you have to study them. Now, let's read through them, and then I'm going to explain to you in a basic example how to apply them. Guys, extremely important. You need to know these principles for learning unit 10. The main principles that you need to know now for our test 2 is the 1, 2, 3 rules that I have added at your top right corner. Now, let's work through the table. All assets and liabilities at year end should be recognized into our group at closing spot rate. Two, all income and expenses at year end should be recognized into our group at an average rate. Three, at acquisition. Remember, at acquisition in terms of RFRS 3 will be the date when the parent obtains control or at acquisition of an associate, the date when the investor has significant influence. And this will be recognized based on the acquisition date rate. Number four, post-acquisition equity to the beginning of the period 
we need to use the rate used in our prior conversion trial balance. Number five, our goodwill, and this is an important rule, guys. Goodwill shall be recognized at closing rate and treated as an asset of the foreign operation. This is important. It shall be treated as an asset of our foreign operation. Number six, fair value adjustments. Remember, why fair value adjustment? RFRS 3 indicates to us that at acquisition date, all assets and liabilities transferred into the group should be at fair value. And they indicate to us that this shall be treated as an asset or liability of the foreign operation. Number seven. Intra-group items such as dividends paid, we need to use the transaction date rate. And number eight, transfers to reserves for current period by foreign operation. We need to use the closing spot rate. And all cumulative differences shall be recognized in our Foreign Currency Translation Reserve, our FCTR account. Now again, I have included a timeline for us. At acquisition date will be at acquisition date rate. Important. If there is any goodwill or fair value adjustments, we will treat this as an asset in terms of our goodwill or liability of the foreign operation. Then important for our since period, which will be post acquisition equity to the beginning of our period. They've indicated to us that we will have to use the rate used in our prior conversion trial balance. Current year Assets and liabilities at the end of our reporting period shall be recognized and measured at a closing spot rate and profit and loss items. Now guys, when I refer to profit and loss items, this will be our income and expense shall be at an average spot rate. Then you can include if there is dividends paid guys, you need to remember that this will be at the transaction rate. Now, please refer to example two. Example two. Now, this is a very basic example, and it is important that you know that we will not look at our FCTR account in detail. I want to indicate to you how to apply the basic principles of our table on how to translate a foreign operation. Now, again, this is basic principles. On your left-hand side, you will identify a timeline. We have an acquisition date of 1 July 2016. We have a parent that purchased shares in a subsidiary, and the subsidiary is a foreign operation. We need to consolidate this foreign operation into our group. Therefore, we need to translate the annual financial statements of the subsidiary to RAND value. Then you will identify that we have included a trial balance now. Guys, this is not a complete set. This basic trial balance example is not in accordance with RFRS you will see that I have included abbreviations. It's a basic example. Now, this is a trial balance. What is the first thing that you do when you compile a set of financial statements or receive a trial balance from a client when you need to start with the audit? You have to ensure that your trial balance balance assets minus equity and liabilities should be your net effect of zero. It should 
balance. Now, we've received the trial balance of our subsidiary in a foreign currency. Now, what is the rules? All assets and liabilities should be translated using our closing spot rate, and they've provided this to us being 10 Rand. Therefore, add an additional column, rate 10 Rand. All assets and liabilities, guys. Then the next line item, all of our income and expenses should be based on an average rate. Now, again, I've included net profit after tax using the 11 Rand 50, our average rate. Guys, again, income and expenses, I've included a total. I want to indicate to you how this is recognized in our retained earnings. Now, when you look at this trial balance, do you see that when we look at our retained earnings section, we have a total of 9,200 for our profit and loss, or our profit for the year, that we need to recognize based on our average rate. Now, guys, do you see that the trial balance in rand value does not balance? And that balancing figure will normally be recognized in our FCTR account. But why doesn't it balance? Because we are recognizing our assets and liabilities at a closing spot rate, and we need to recognize our profit at an average rate. Therefore, guys, apples and pears in one basket. It will not balance. And then the balancing figure we recognize in our FCTR account. Please refer back to your lecture notes.